Hello everybody, it's Dante Starshine here. Thanks for tuning into this video. Today we're going to be talking astrology and going into the full moon in Aries that will happen tomorrow and also the direct motions of the planet Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury, which all happened in the past week. Before we go into that, I want to mention that I'm doing a special now to celebrate Jupiter going direct. Jupiter represents wisdom, so if we're calling in wisdom, it's a great time to connect with the stars and see what's going on in our charts. So I'm offering 40% uh, off readings, $66 readings, to the first five people that respond, and I will do whatever kind of chart reading you want, birth chart analysis, or to look at the transits at the present moment over the next year, or synastry. So special offer for the next five people to celebrate Jupiter going direct. Um, so what do the plans going direct mean? It is a pivot point, and when planets go direct, there can be a little bit of chaos in the air as the retrograde motion is like a review of some themes that when we get to that moment of direct, there's an integration. We suddenly might find ourselves going in another, different directions and there might be triggers that cause that to happen. So most recently it was Jupiter and Mercury. Both happened today. Mercury goes direct uh, three times a year. It happens quite frequently. And Mercury retrograde is known to cause issues in communication and issues with exchanges and sometimes issues with technology as they are means of communication. Um, it can also mean re reviewing things that we've been learning and kind of fine tuning details there. Jupiter retrograde is a longer cycle of five months and Jupiter retrograde is about our wisdom as Jupiter is about our beliefs, wisdom and the way that we expand and grow spiritually and as beings. So Jupiter retrograde concludes a longer cycle and signals an even bigger movement forward. Um, so I'll talk a lot more about that as we go. Um, it's interesting that they're happening around the same time as they're both planets connected to learning. Mercury connected to the more intellectual kind of learning of practical things and Jupiter connected to the more spiritual learning, the wisdom, the inner light. So it can be like a, an epiphany or an aha moment. And this is especially true because Mercury is trine to Saturn and sextile to Venus at this time as it goes direct. And so it's touching the planets of discipline, karma, um, Saturn delays, but never rewards. So it's again, the learning and the communication we do that's connected to our long-term goals, Saturn is really going to progress right now. And we might see things going in really positive directions. Venus, the planet of relationships and pleasure and love, um, there can be positive growth in love and growth um, through our communication with partners and friends. And Jupiter is trying to the sun and to Mars. So Jupiter is connecting to our light and connecting to our will to move forward at this time. And Jupiter is also sextile to the moon at the time of the full moon, around the time that it starts moving forward. So there is this kind of momentum in our emotional development as well. None of these planets have um, intense, harsh aspects. Up until the point of the full moon, there will be a King Conx to Mercury, which I'll talk about. Now, this Mercury retrograde has been intense. Um, if you're new to astrology, there's some things that they say never to do during Mercury retrograde, like uh, buying new appliances or technology or plan trips and all of these different things. And the changes that have come up for me has brought me to do all of them. And so they are not fixed rules. And actually most of these decisions I've made are seeming good so far, but we'll see what happens as Mercury leaves its shadow phase in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> so actually last week, Saturn went direct as well. And Saturn direct is an even bigger pivot point of like our long-term vision. How, what, are cha what is changing in our long-term vision? And for me, it was this sudden moment where I had thought that I was really going to try and settle in a different place and live. I w I'm in Asheville, North Carolina now, and I thought I was going to like make this work. And then all of a sudden, things were not working out with my roommates and this inner calling inside me was like, no, you need to go back from what's to what's familiar to you. So I booked my tickets back to Mexico and I'm really excited for that. 
So maybe there was something that happened like last week around the 11th that really changed your trajectory. And now that Jupiter is going direct as well, it's this time to integrate any wisdom or knowledge and really, you know, get back our inner beliefs, our wisdom, our spirituality, and take that in a new direction. And it's good to look back at the whole retrograde period. So Saturn went retrograde in the end of May around the 23rd, and Jupiter went retrograde the end of June around the 21st, I think. So, and Mercury went ret retrograde last month, the end of September on the 23rd. So what happened in those cycles since the end of May, uh, since the end of June and since the end of last month, what have, have been the themes that have been coming up for you? And in the collective of Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius can be a lot of this kind of evolution of society. I think as the situation on our planet changes as society, people are really considering what their role in society is. How do they fit into that? How can they serve? And what is their relationship to society? What is their relationship to the benefit of all, the betterment of all, which is a very Aquarian value, which is, again, where those planets are at. Um, Mercury retrograde, <laughs> there was a meme that said, this was the most retrograde Mer or Mer most retrograde retrograde Mercury has ever retrograded. And I kind of agree. Um, I've seen a lot of people having technical issues, issues with their appliances, issues in miscommunication. There's been so many miscommunications in the relationships that I see in the immediate vicinity. And now in Libra, it is about kind of intimacy and one-to-one -one connection. So I'm also seeing some people review the themes of what has been so significant in their past relationships and what do they really want from relationship. Redefining those values um, and taking the lessons you've learned about relating in the past month as now we go through the shadow phase in which, you know, we've gone back to that point as far back as the planet goes. And so everything that we've progressed through once in the forward motion and once in the backward mo motion, we go through a third time in the post-shadow phase. And the post-shadow phase is about integration. So as we go through the next month, it's really good to consider what are those lessons, especially now that these planets are still moving slow, they'll pick up speed. These next couple of weeks are really weeks to consider what we're integrating and how we're going to carry that forward. Now, onto the full moon itself. Um, so the full moon is in Aries this time, and Aries is that inner warrior, the initiator, a great creative force. And what calls to me most of all about this is that Aries' ruling planet, Mars, is um, conjoined with the sun. And now as I talk about the planetary relationships, in the description of this video, where, whether, wherever you're watching it, there will be a link to a picture, or maybe I even posted it with a picture, um, where you can take a peek at the chart if you're studying astrology, or if you want to study astrology, you can come to understand the relationships that the planets are forming. So the basis of this is oppositions are 180 degrees apart. They're the vertical lines that cross the entire chart. They're the integration of opposites. They create polarity. They um, can cause tension, but also powerful attraction and synergy at the same time. Um, there is the trine that is a harmonious relationship. Those are 120 degree angles. They're the long blue lines. And those are about harmony and synergy, connection, flow. The sextiles are similar. They are the 60 degree lines, the short blue lines. The squares are 90 degrees. They're about tension that leads to growth. Um, clashing of energies or conflict that leads to evolution. Um, so those are the relationships the planets form. And there's finally the King Kongs are in conjunction. And that is when planets are different element, different mode. Again, planets are either fire, earth, air or water and they're either fixed um cardinal fixed or mutable and so when both of those things are different according to the sign they are in a king conks and that relationship is quite exact and that creates a kind of 
awkwardness. The planets don't work the same way. So there's a, this weird dynamic tension that can cause evolution that takes place with the King Kongs. So let's look at all of these aspects. Um, anyway, so the full moon itself, the sun is with Mars, which is the ruling planet of Aries. Um, and when a planet is with the sun, and this is only true for the visible planets, and in the sense, you know, Vedic astrology doesn't use the invisible planets, the planets that are invisible to the naked eye at all. Um, and there's something about the light that comes through the planets that brings the energy here. Now, when a planet is with the sun, it's being outshone by the sun. We cannot see it. And they call that a planet that is combust by the sun's rays. And combust planets are um, planets that are sometimes angry, they say. They can be kind of taken to a more inward direction. And they don't get to bring their full positive influence into the sphere. So both um, Mercury isn't quite, well, Mercury is close enough in the sun's rays, but Mars is right up in there in the sun's rays. And this kind of will, you know, the positive side of Mars is that energy of the, the warrior spirit, the endurance, the will to create and to stand for what's right. And the shadow of Mars is the anger, frustration, aggression. So there's a lot of inner aggression that comes up with this influence. We might be angry, um, especially because it's in Libra. We might be angry in our relationships. We might be angry about themes of justice. And I was actually going to make a video about this particular influence a couple days ago. And there was, um, you know, I was feeling this inner fire. And through the inner fire, actually, like, it led to me, like, I impulsively, like, tossing things around, moving too quick, breaking technology, and set me back. And that was a Mercury retrograde manifestation somehow. Whoops. Um, <laughs> so not that fun. But um, Mars there takes us inward to a place where we might be holding on to anger and working to release it. And that's why it's important to be careful with this full moon to not put yourself in situations where you might be triggered, um, where that anger might come up and find an outer means of expressing something that doesn't really need to cause um, damage in the world. So take that anger into the inner alchemical fire and channel it for your own transformation. Now, the moon is also conjoined with Eris. So, Eris is the feminine awakener. She's the wild feminine that disrupts the flow of things to call for justice. And that's kind of similar to the quality of Mars and Libra, is fighting for others, fighting for justice. So, Mercury and... Sorry... The moon with Eris is like our, our inner emotional mind, our emotional need is to disrupt things. And if there's a situation in our relationships that isn't working, it this full moon can be a time where we do disrupt the flow of harmony in order to come back into that place of harmony. There's this metaphysical principle that when we go from um, connection into disconnection or, or chaos and move back into connection, the connection becomes stronger. So we cannot fear disharmony and the things that disrupt the flow because by processing them and moving through them, that is how we create true unity. So while this is the goddess of discord and disruption, it always serves a higher purpose. So pay attention to things that are disrupting your emotions and ask yourself, is there a way to interrupt the flow of what is unjust right now? So, aspects to the moon. The moon is square to Pluto, creating emotional intensity, perhaps obsession. Pluto is directly in that T-square, 
So Pluto squaring Mars and the Sun as well brings out again Pluto and Scor um, Pluto and Mars are both rulers of Scorpio. So they are the kind of conscious and unconscious will. So there's tension between our conscious will and our unconscious will. And this can be a good thing because the square aspect relates to Mars. So it's about kind of integrating, you know, where's the gap between our actions and what we're really calling forward and what we are really desiring at this deep unconscious level. Can we bring that into the light? So here this square to Pluto can be an obsessive quality about our fight for justice or about whatever needs to be, again, emotionally disrupted. Pluto, no, no, no more of that. Um, interrupt that thought. <laughs> so here's a very interesting influence and you don't see this in every chart. It's called a yod or a yod. I think the better pronunciation is a yod. And it's a finger of fate. It's the, created between two sextiles and, a, and two, king, two king kinkunxes and a sextile. And it creates a little like long triangle in the chart. And the pinnacle of the triangle is the most aspected planet and it points to what points to destiny perhaps um, in a person's birth chart and in the moment it points to where our evolutionary drive is leading us and here it's to Uranus and Taurus and Uranus and Taurus some say that Uranus is in its fall on Taurus as Uranus is all about changing and upheaving things and Taurus is all about stability and Taurus relating to the planet and finances this is a long-term influence of how we are experiencing the karmic feedback of what we have done to the environment and what the destructive economic system we've created does to us as humans so there might be some themes about this coming up but um in our personal lives this can be a sort of moment where Venus and Mercury, personal planets of communication and love and relationship, experience some disruption, upheaval, or shock. So it can manifest as shocking words or shocks within our relationships. It can bring things quickly to the surface. There is this union between Mercury and Venus now that can make for soft, beautiful communication, flowing communication, Venus right now in Sagittarius is bringing this adventure, adventurous love, perhaps a desire to explore or to try new things or to really pursue freedom and knowledge. And Mercury in Libra is bringing us to really find balance and harmony in our words. So these two things are going together, but there's something um, perhaps about our values or about our possessions or about um, just being embodied that shocks us and causes this evolutionary force to come forward with the energy of this moon. And now Uranus is also still square to Saturn and still square to Jupiter. So this is an ongoing influence that's bringing forth a lot of Uranian energy to the system, to our beliefs. It's a great time of transformation. So Uranus is only being more highlighted now in this chart. Um, there's Venus square to Neptune and squares to Neptune are about idealization. Neptune is about spirituality, about stories, about visions and narratives that we tell ourselves, the stories that have been passed on of the ages, um, what's brought to us from the media, from entertainment, all become these inner narratives that play out in our psyche. And this all relates to Neptune. And the evolutionary process is dissolving those narratives, looking at what those stories are, and one by one, letting them go. And Venus to Neptune square can be idealized stories about love and relationships. So 
we might be in a, a strong projection right now that falls away and we you know get to see the reality of that relationship for exactly what it is they're planets of love so it can really ex you know accentuate that love i have this natally with neptune and venus square so it really like creates this kind of euphoric love but then what you realize with that particular aspect is that sometimes what the story we're telling ourselves that creates this feeling of love isn't really true that doesn't mean the love is true it means that this narrative the story is kind of like a way that we're giving ourselves a permission slip to connect to that greater spiritual love but we can go beyond that story and connect directly to the love without looking at exactly all of these things that need to be in alignment or fit our particular story to get there so that's an interesting aspect hmm. i'm looking i get close because i look to the chart that i have pulled up um, all of the aspects i already noticed i spoke about but there's always like little ones that are hiding in there So yeah, back to that Saturn, um, Saturn trine Mercury thing that brings out, you know, karmic communication. And again, as Mercury moves forward in that connection to Saturn, it's like what we're speaking now, what we're speaking into existence, into the universe can really manifest in potent ways. And now what I'm noticing in addition to that is a grand trine when we connect it to the, um, minor planet Ceres and next to Ceres is Black Moon Lilith and these are both feminine influences and even the north node of the moon is quite close to there so there's a connection between the work we're doing and our communications and thoughts to this wild feminine energy Black Moon Lilith is the kind of primordial wild feminine that rebels and this speaks to our deep more deeply buried desires and cravings and how we seek to express them how, how we seek to really find our freedom so there can be work that we do around freedom but right now it's linked also with Ceres who is this goddess of the home and the hearth and all connected to um, the abundance of the earth and the care that we give to ourselves and to each other so this wild feminine is taking on a nurturing quality and it's in connection with mercury and saturn bringing about again intellectual growth around that area and karmic work around that area so that's a potentially interesting thing to see how that manifests and again this will play out for people who have early degrees of air signs planets in those air signs much more um, people who have progressed degrees of cardinal signs are going to experience the energy of the full moon quite potently so the sun signs or moon signs or any signs of libra aries capricorn cancer will probably experience something really potent with this Right, and so back to um, the position of the sun as well. We have Haumea with the sun, and Haumea is the Hawaiian fertility goddess who is able to birth um, new life through any part of her body and just walk among the earth and give life and fertility to the plants and the earth around her if there was you know, drought or any problems with the earth. Just her presence would shower life onto things so the sun with this um Haumea, um Haumea does connect with fertility with gestation with birth um so this can be a time when at this full moon we're thinking about what we're we're birthing or what we're giving life to and Haumea is also connected to our evolution so our soul's evolution and um what we're becoming through our growth process so there can be that energy playing out as well and um, mercury is with make make and that is also a planet uh, that is a male fertility god of the easter island samoan 
that Samoa? I don't know. I don't know. I just said that word. Don't quote me on that. But um, from Easter Island, and um, it's connected to male fertility and power. So there can be this like potency with her words that can perhaps be this um, ability to plant seeds with her words with this full moon and or, or at this time really. Um, and let those seeds bring new life, bring new power as the, the seed and the egg are these two different components. So the seed is the what goes into the soil and comes to grow. So you may be planting seeds with your words or with your thoughts at this time as to what you really want to birth, what you want to give life to. Um, so those are all the aspects I notice that really jump out to me. So in summary, um, this is a potent time of moving forward. It's a potent time with moving forward with our thoughts, our beliefs, and our work in the world. It's a time to recultivate our wisdom and review. It's a time where our personal drive and will might be brought to the surface. There might be some frustration beneath the surface. And it's good to be very mindful with how we act with that energy. There can be a disruptive quality to it and also a life-giving quality to it. So be with that energy within yourself and ask yourself again, what, what do I need to change in myself and in my relationships to bring this growth for all? The axis of Libra and Aries is all about the balance between self and other. And while the sun is shining in Libra, um, calling forth this kind of balance in relationships, the moon, our inner emotional self, is seeking to find individuality, especially in that connection to Eris, there's this fierce movement towards individuality. And this full moon is a time to really look for how we can create the balance between self and other in harmonious ways. And the energy of Mars, which is combust, so a little aggravated with this moon, can be channeled into occult power. Mars also relates to occult power. So taking this energy inward it can mean that we um, channel any aggression we have towards our spiritual growth. In order to break through the veils and get to these higher states of consciousness, we need to harness that aggression. And that's why people that push down their aggression and push down the darker parts of themselves may seem like great, beautiful, humble people on the outside, but they don't really break through to these higher states of consciousness. You have to have a drive and you have to take that drive outside of the outer fight against things that are wrong in the world and channel that into a battle against your own inner demons so that you can conquer those things that limit you or bring out um, negative actions in you and alchemize them into great spiritual power. So that's the energy of this moon and a reminder to you all that I'm doing my um, discount. The next five people get who book readings with me will get a discount of $66 for the reading, which is about 40% off. And doing this to celebrate Jupiter uh, Direct, which will bring new wisdom into our lives. So my website is DanteStarshine.com. You can look at my readings there. You can book one by emailing me at DanteStarshine at gmail.com. And the weekly live stream channeling will be this week on Thursday. And it'll be on my YouTube channel, Dante Starshine. I usually do my astrology videos live to Facebook, but Facebook um, blocked me from doing lives for 30 days. So until November 3rd, because of an image that I posted like a year ago, um, it was a, a child sticking a knife into the electric outlet and it said, as a child, I learned I had a sensitivity to energies or something silly like that. And um, they blocked that one because it apparently encouraged self-harm. I mean, it was just funny, but I guess we have to be a lot more careful about everything we share on Facebook these days. Um, so anyway... And yeah, I do channeling sessions as well, and you can book those as well at DanteStarshine.com. 
the channeling course is going to be launching again quite soon. So if that calls to you, uh, feel free to message me and we will set up a call to talk about it and go deeper into the magic of what that could be. So look forward to connecting and have a beautiful, brilliant day. Thanks for tuning in again and see you next time.